With the arrival of the TESS Orbital Observatory at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, I thought now would be the perfect time to talk about our hunt for exoplanets and the other orbital observatories that have made this search possible. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and let's take a look at this. Back in 1992, the first exoplanet was discovered. It's what's known as a super-Earth. It was four times the size of the planet Earth, and it was found orbiting a pulsar. This discovery was made using the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. And with that discovery, it was on. We wanted to find as many exoplanets as we could. And the reason is simple. If there's an exoplanet in a habitable zone around another star, it could hold life and it could answer that question, are we alone? But even with all that urgency, it was still another 14 years until we put an observatory in space dedicated to finding exoplanets. And that first observatory was the Karat, and that stands for Convection, Rotation, and Planetary Transit. The Karat mission was led by the French Space Agency, and they were helped along by the ESA. And this space telescope went into orbit December 27th of 2006. It hitched a ride on a Soyuz rocket, and there it started its hunt for other exoplanets. Karat's orbit was designed to keep it facing away from the sun. That way, obviously, you don't get interference from our local star. So during the summer, it was pointed towards the galactic center. And in the winter months, it was pointed away from the galactic center. Karat found its first two exoplanets in 2007. They were what's known as a hot Jupiter. Exoplanets about the same size as our solar neighbor, just closer to their sun, so they retain more heat. But overall, in its six years of orbit, Karat only found a total of 32 confirmed exoplanets. And the reason for this is the technology just wasn't there yet. At least not for a satellite, not at that time. And unfortunately, on November 2nd of 2012, Karat had a major computer malfunction that made it unable to send information back to Earth. After several repair attempts, it was found it just wasn't going to happen. And on June 24th, 2013, they made its final course correction and set it on a decaying orbit to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. While it was the loss of a great telescope, the Kepler spacecraft was already in orbit. You see, Kepler went to orbit on March 6th of 2009 aboard a Delta II rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that's when it started its three and a half year mission of hunting the exoplanets. And Kepler was a lot more advanced than the Karat spacecraft, which you can expect when you share data with other people's experiments. For example, the Karat's image sensor array was made up of four CCDs, whereas Kepler's had 42. So right there, it's going to have a better imaging quality. And it did. Instead of orbiting the Earth itself, Kepler is parked in a position where it actually orbits the Sun in what's known as an Earth trailing orbit. And Kepler takes around 372 days to complete their orbit compared to Earth's 365. This would exclude the Earth from messing up any of the images Kepler's trying to take and keep it nicely pointed away from the sun. Kepler was originally designed for a mission time of three and a half years, during which time it performed very well. Unfortunately, however, in July of 2012, Kepler started breaking down. One of its reaction wheels failed, but it had four on board, so this wasn't too big of an issue. It made a little bit of problems for fine tuning. Well, not long after, in May of 2013, another wheel went down. And at this point, it meant that Kepler could not be aimed. So it was basically a junk telescope at that point. But in November of 2013, the guys and gals at NASA came up with a plan they called Second Light. And basically what this was, was to park Kepler in such a way that the solar energy coming from the sun would keep it stabilized. They wouldn't be able to focus Kepler on one specific spot all the time. Instead, they'd get a moving view as the spacecraft orbited our star. This was put into effect, and Kepler is still up there today, making its orbits and finding more exoplanets. And the numbers are staggering. During the primary Kepler mission, it found 4,496 candidates for exoplanets, of which 2,341 of them have been confirmed. They were also able to detect 30 exoplanets that were less than twice the size of the Earth and in the star's habitable zone. On top of that, the second mission found 622 candidate exoplanets, and 197 of those have been confirmed. And that includes this most recent bunch they just announced today. And like I said, Kepler, that little spacecraft that just won't stop, 
has been in orbit now for eight years and 11 months and shows no sign of stopping. And that brings us to the newest satellite searching for exoplanets, that's TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Something that makes TESS different than Kepler is that it's carrying much higher quality cameras on board. In fact, TESS is carrying four cameras, whereas Kepler only had one. And while Kepler can only study stars that are really far away, because if they're too close or too bright, it blurs out its sensors like this. However, TESS will be able to examine stars that are 30 to 100 times brighter than what Kepler can even be pointed at. This means those stars will be a lot closer. In fact, they'll be close enough that we can examine their atmosphere for signs of life. And hasn't that been the goal all along? TESS will go into orbit sometime in the middle of April. They say no earlier than April 16th. And we'll be riding aboard one of those Falcon 9 rockets. So for right now, TESS is sitting at the Kennedy Space Center and being prepped for that ride. And I know that I can't wait to see what that craft can do in orbit. And finally, let's wrap this up with the James Webb Space Telescope. Part of TESS's mission is not only going to be to examine closer planets, but to find good candidates for us to point the Webb Telescope at. The James Webb Space Telescope will go into orbit on an Ariane 5 rocket launched from French New Guinea in 2019. NASA says it will be the premier observatory for the next decade. And this truly is a multi-agency expedition. We have the Canadian Space Agency involved, we have the ESA involved, NASA involved, and Northrop Grumman helped develop this satellite as well. The James Webb Space Telescope will feature a mirror that has 18 segments that fold up for easier transportation. And this mirror is more than twice the size of the one that's in the Hubble right now. So the imaging with this satellite should be amazing. Another pretty amazing advance for this is its sunshield design. The sunshield on the James Webb Telescope is as big as a tennis court. It's multi-layer and it will keep this telescope from picking up any stray light from our star. The James Webb will be carrying four instruments on it. These are both cameras and spectrometers, and their sensors are so precise, they'll be able to pick up the faintest signal. Another advance this satellite has is what's known as a multi-shutter, which will allow this telescope to image 100 objects at a time. And the James Webb Telescope's mission is simple. It is going to track transiting exoplanets, these targets that have been picked out by the test telescope. By using the onboard spectrograph, it will read the gases in the planet's atmosphere and be able to tell if there's compounds there that can only be made by organic life. So this should be the telescope that can answer that question that we were trying to answer back in 1992. Are we alone in our galaxy? So what do you think? Was the quest for extraterrestrial life worth all the time, money, and effort that we spent putting these four satellites into space? Or were there better ways that we could have spent this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to click that like button, share it with your friends, and maybe subscribe so you know when I put up something new. My videos come out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I hope to see you here again soon. And until next time, I want you to have fun and be safe.